we're choosing T-Mobile Fund House. This is Sarita Financial Care. Am I have your name, please? Uh, my name is Jeff Soberoff, and I wanted to I want to know why you guys want to incriminate yourselves. You say your name is who? Soberoff. Excuse me. This right at this moment is I want to know why you want to incriminate yourselves. Um, I'm not going to incriminate myself at all. Well, I mean, listen, listen, listen. I received. Wait a minute. After a lengthy conversation with various individuals yesterday, they came to the conclusion that they ought to unlock my phone. And they told me that tomorrow, not today, I would get an email to unlock my phone. It would give me instructions to unlock my phone. And I open up this email and I find out that even though it's addressed to me, and, it, it's, a, it's, and it's sent to my email address, that the IMEI number that this email refers to doesn't belong to my phone. That's when I knew that it was bullshit. But I wanted to make sure. So I call up one of my website guys who knows all about Android phones. I'm an I'm I'm 66 years old. I'm kind of stuck in the uh, uh, analog age. You know what I mean? So this guy comes over. And he takes a look at your email before he even touches my phone. And he says, this isn't going to do anything. This is bullshit. That's exactly what Frank told me. It's bullshit. And sure enough, I said, well, do you know how to make it work? So we followed the instructions again. And no, it doesn't work. Now on the email, there's a link to another page on your website. That page, which may have information I need, has been down all day, which is exactly the kind of thing that I would expect from T-Mobile. Now, if you guys weren't intending in unlocking my phone, why did you send me this email in the first place? And why did you tell me you were going to unlock my phone? Actually, um... Well, they gave you the information yesterday, and I'm not sure why they sent you that, because um, I'm in the financial care department, and we don't allow phones at all. We don't even deal with phones. So the department that you got to yesterday was the team department, and they did send you an email for the phone to be unlocked. It's shown right here on your account that the SIM was unlocked, and it's shown again that the SIM was unlocked. No, um, no, ex phone. excuse me. If my SIM yeah. was, if my phone was unlocked, I would be able to get into all my settings. And I would be able to make sure that the NDO number was right and everything else. But I can't get into that section of my phone because it's still locked. So, I can do, I can so don't you tell me, so don't, well, so, excuse me. Now, I don't owe you any money. Now, I know that you're not going to like this, but this is the way it is. First of all, even though I'm not an attorney, I know a lot about the law. And I also know about surveillance because I'm a, because I'm a detective. I've, I've been an investigative reporter, an investigative journalist for over 20 years. And I happen to know that when you're a recording machine tell somebody that their conversation is going to be recorded for whatever reason you want to say it's recorded, that means that I have no expectation of privacy. And under those circumstances, I don't even have to tell you when I'm recording you. So, I want you to know, since you're from the financial department, that on the day in question, when I canceled my account, 
I called T-Mobile. I called T-Mobile as soon as I had my Cricket account. And I was sitting in front of my laptop with my webcam on. And I recorded my conversation where one of your uh, customer service representatives allegedly recorded the cancellation of my account. Now, I get an email that, that has an IMEI number on it that is not the one in my phone with instructions which are nonsense. Now, when a jury sees this, they're going to know exactly what's going on. That you decided that you would waste 24 hours of my time. Well, my time is worth 500 bucks an hour. I can bring receipts. I can bring things into the court to prove that. And so you are going to pay me 24, uh, at 20, 24 hours at $500 an hour because that's what I make in recording studios. That's what I'm going to ask you for yesterday and today. Plus, take a look at my file. That represents probably over 100 hours of phone calls with you. You are going to give me $500 an hour for each one of those hours. I can prove to a court because I have your own words, this words of your own staff, lying to me from the very beginning. The first thing they lied about was, well, we can't import your number because it's been given away to somebody else. Well, you know, Amy White from iWireless held that number for me. She held it for me for several months. The number I'm speaking to you on right now is the number she held for me. Why did you people lie to me about something that is so easy to do? You import other people's numbers. Why did you not want to import mine? Sir, um, this is the first time me actually seeing your account, so I did not lie to you at all. You might have got Sir, listen, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. This is the way we look at it. This is the way we look at it in this country. You're an employee of T-Mobile, aren't you? That means, that means, that means, that means, that means you're part of the gang. You're part of what they, uh, you are part, you are fully part of the fraud you are trying to commit upon me at this very point moment. I did not try to commit any fraud. You are a part. Your account. So therefore, Excuse I was me. trying to assist you with your account. Now, if you want to say that Okay, so, so, so are we going to, are we going to, uh, so, are we, so are we going to, uh, so, does that mean, no, uh, uh, does that mean, <laughs> since, since I'm talking to somebody from financial, I'm assuming that the promise you made to me at 6 o'clock this morning about sending me an email tomorrow, not today, but having me wait for 24 hours, that I'm going to assume that the promise that you made for me at 6 o'clock this morning, that you would be unlocking my phone and you would be sending me instructions as to how to do that, was a lie because I've received an email which is useless. And since I'm talking to a person in financial, people who want to promote the lie that I didn't cancel my account, I'm, uh, and that's why you're charging me this exorbitant fee. Actually, what you're charging me for is the fo broken phone you sold me. You know, I talked to Samsung and Samsung is extremely distressed because you're not supposed to take, get a phone back from somebody when it's defective and put it back in your warehouse and sell that and give that Samsung product to somebody else. That's bad for their image. They told me that last night when I talked to them. Now, 
Why did I talk to him last night? I talked to him last night because I was instructed by a T-Mobile uh, supervisor to call Samsung. They have the unlock codes, but they don't. And lo and behold, on this email, I'm told, thank you for taking time to contact T-Mobile. There is no unlock code provided by the manufacturer. That's because you, yeah, yeah. that's because, yeah, yeah. that. excuse me. If you don't want your problem resolved today, talking to me is not going to get the problem resolved because I'm oh. if I can't find that real. Okay, so, so are resolved, you going to connect, so I, so I, I, okay. Okay, okay, so are you going to connect me to a technician who's going to unlock my phone, yeah. yes or no? That's what I'm transferring you over to that department so they can assist you with your account. Thank you. My name is Jeff Sobra. Oh, thank you for that. And can I get the, the account password or the last for the social, please? Well, that call was 11 minutes and 36 seconds long, and now they won't accept my PIN number. I think I'm going to have to call them again. This is the seventh call now that I've made today. Let's see what happens. Oh, fuck it. They're not going to do it. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait till I got a new phone. Hello, thank you for calling T-Mobile. This is Jen. How can I help? Well, I want to know how come uh, a PIN number that I have used for over a year when dealing with you people is now not recognized as my PIN number. Okay. Uh, I understand and don't worry. I can help you with that. Can no, you can't. Who am I speaking with today? My name is Jeff Soberoff. people can just change their record at their whim. Maybe they oh, can do that. Me, you know? Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to be checking. There's a lot of uh, accounts that have been pulled Hey, out. hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. All of that stuff is in the same place. Now, this is a simple question. You people don't like answering questions. I've noticed that from the very beginning. You don't like answering questions. That is my PIN number, isn't it? I thought, no, what you just said, what you just said is that you were looking at my account and there's a lot on it. And that's true. However, you said you were looking at my account and now you're telling me maybe you're not? Now, come on. It's, look, it's either one way or it's another. You know, the, the racists in my country just elected a guy who, uh, for president who's a pathological liar. And now, I, and you know what? If you guys aren't willing to admit that the last four of my social was also my PIN number, then I don't know why I'm talking to you because it's a waste of time. Uh, here's uh, what I'm currently doing right now. I'm trying to pull up your account. You're trying to pull up my account. He hasn't even seen my account yet, people. But there's a lot on it. Uh, I don't know what information I'm listening to. I don't know what this guy is. I don't know what these people are doing here. He says, I'm pulling up your account 
And I'm looking, and there's a lot on your account. You people just heard him say that. And yet, he's he's still trying to pull it up. Maybe if you uh, maybe if you sprinkled some Viagra on the file, it would help you get it up. Uh, you provided me the three zero nine five eight five five two zero four, and uh, it appears that there's a lot of what? Uh, there's a lot of results. There's a lot of what? Uh, there's a lot of results. Would you spell that for me? I can't understand what you're saying. There's a lot of what? Uh, there's a lot. Uh, R for Romeo, E for Edward, F for Tom, U for Uniform, L for Lima, T for Tango. Results. There's a lot of results. Oh, a lot of results. Okay. Yeah, I know. But, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't my account number, shouldn't my name and the telephone number and my PIN number be at the very beginning. Now this is this this is the gambit today, folks. They don't want to do this. They promised they were going to do this at six o'clock this morning. They have sent me an email which is fake. This email couldn't unlock anybody's phone. They don't want to do that. What they want to do is they want to defraud me of another hundred dollars. And this gentleman here is not going to even admit that I am giving him the right PIN number. This is how T-Mobile works. Do not use T-Mobile. You will be sorry if you do. Uh, Mr. Jeff, I already have your account here on my hand. to me. I told him what the last four of my social was, which is also my PIN number. And he said, that's, that's not your PIN number. That's not your PIN number. But he's lying to me. You just told me so. Why did that happen? Now, this is what's going to have to happen because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys another chance to have a tech call me back. At 6 o'clock this morning, a supervisor agreed to have a tech call me up today and make sure that my phone could be unlocked. I was told, not today, yes, tomorrow, I'm supposed to wait 24 hours to get an email to unlock my telephone. And, you know, I got an email, and it's addressed to me, and my email address, and my name, but the IMEI number of the phone in question, I don't know what that is. That is not the IMIE number in my phone. That's not what it is. So, so the thing is, I believe that you never, ever, intended to unlock this phone. But I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to leave my phone on the hook. I'm going to wait and I'm going to watch it because it doesn't ring. That's one of you guys sold me a broken phone. Now you want to charge me for it. And you know what? You didn't sell it to me. You bought you gave it to me. And I have proof of that because I was making a movie at the time when we made this agreement. And you sent me a phone that's a lot cheaper than the phone that your defective SIM card ruined. Your SIM card broke my phone. So, out of the kindness of your hearts, you go into your warehouse and you get a phone that has already been returned because it's defective. This phone does lots of interesting things. One of the most interesting things it does is, is it'll wake up in the middle of the night if you leave it on, and it will dial a number just all by itself. So when I'm using this phone, I got to I got to remove the battery before I go to sleep. Now that sucks.
Now, you know, what, what if somebody in my family or a close friend or somebody needed me, but I'm not going to get the message because if I leave my phone in a condition, and by the way, I might not get the call anyway because the ringer doesn't work half the time. But that's beside the point. What what good is it? I can't go to, I, you know, I can't, I can't, if there's an emergency and somebody needs me, they can't get me because I had to take the battery out of my phone because I don't want to disturb a client or another friend in the middle of the night because my phone will call them. And, you know, I started to think that this was very strange. And on six o'clock on a Saturday morning, I called your facility and I was it was and I was told that this phone was previously owned and returned because it was defective. My first question was, well how come you didn't send it back to the factory or shred it? By the way, I have talked to Samsung. I talked to Samsung last night at your direction at the direction of, st of your staff because you guys told me that Samsung had the unlock code. That is a lie. You put the unlock code in the phone. So I received this... E wait a minute, wait a minute. I received this email today and it says, Thank you for taking the time to contact T-Mobile. There is no unlock code provided by the manufacturer to unlock this device. This specific model can only be unlocked by using the device unlock app in the device itself. Please be advised that specific requirements will need to be met in order for your device to qualify for a permanent unlock. Well, apparently, you don't intend to unlock my phone. Um, I understand where you are coming from. No, right you now. don't. No, you don't. Because, you, because to understand where I'm coming from, you have to have been giving people the better part of $100 a month and then be absolutely cool because they've lied to you about everything. And, you know, that's not me. That's not me. You can't lie to me and not expect some kind of payback. Uh, without your presence, of course, we don't have a job today. And I understand that uh, you've been through a lot of uh, inconvenience. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 that's a mistake too. When you people, and you know I do humanity a big disservice by comparing you to just people. I do the rest of humanity a big disservice by calling anybody who would be employed by an AT&T company as a person. Because, you know, people have a mode of conduct. One of those things is you tell the truth. You people have never told me the truth. I received this email a day in advance. It's supposed to have instructions on it to unlock my phone. It does not. It does not even have the right I M E I number on it. Now, I don't know how many times I read that tiny little microscopic number to you guys yesterday. I don't, as a matter of fact, over the past year or so, I don't know how many times I've read that to you, but it's really hard for an old blind fuck like me to read. I had to make a, a co I had to put it on paper big enough for me to read so that I could read it to you. I'm tired of reading it to you. And at six o'clock this morning, I was promised by a supervisor I would be getting this email, but I wouldn't be getting it until tomorrow morning. But I got it today and it's fake. Now, can you set a call back up for me and a technician, not somebody from your financial department? or And, and you know, I've asked to speak to financial before. They never wanted to speak to me. Now they want to speak to me about a lie. 
I recorded it the day when I canceled my account. And you well, you know, you can't record us. We don't we don't use those recordings that you make. Okay, but you know, I think a jury will be interested in it. And a jury is going to see it. And there's a thousand other people, there's more than a thousand other people who have a complaint that that jurist is going to listen to. Because this is going to be a large class action procedure. Because I'm, because, because you guys fucked with the wrong Jew. Now, if you want, you can have a technician call me back. But I only want to speak to a technician and somebody who is ready to unlock this phone. Are you going to do that? Well, they hung up. Oh, forget it. Hey, apparently, they don't intend to unlock this phone. They never keep their promises. Uh, I'm going to make a copy of this email. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, if there's any sensitive information on it, like the last four on my social or anything, I'll do something and delete that, and I'm going to be posting this. But this email is a fake. And when I post this thing, I'm going to repost this video with it. And I want you to take note. I'm not going to give you the IMEI number of, that's in the phone. But I will tell you, Scout's Honor, that uh, the IMEI number on this uh, piece of email is not the same number that's in my phone. And that is the kind of sloppy work that these people will do with their books. Uh, this is Dmitry Ivanovich with The Naked Truth.